Aliens in the Mind. Co-starring Vincent Price as Curtis Lark and Peter Cushing as John Cornelius. Lark and Cornelius take Flora Keary away from the remote Isle of Lewig with its frightening colony of mutants and bring her to London where they hope to investigate her mysterious powers as a controller. Under hypnosis, Flora unwittingly exposes more of the mutants, nearer to home. Flora, why did you let Molly Kyle die? Careful. Because she found out Kiri was not my father. So she, she punished my mother. Punished her for begetting me in sin. She burned her, burned her in hell fire. She told her her legs were paralyzed, and my mother thought she couldn't walk, and she just lay there, screaming and screaming for help, and the flames came nearer and nearer, and, and then it was too late. that They were burned in hell fire. And Mother was still screaming for help. Help! Help! Oh, help me, somebody! Oh, for God's sake, I'm burning! Is she all right? It's a bad oh, oxygen. Is she all right? Me. I'm burning! I'm burning! Hold her down! Hold her down! For God's sake, hold her down! Oh, child, can't we stop her? It's all right, Flora. It's all right. There you are. What's that? What's going on? Hey, here, what do you think you're doing? I say, look out, I... I, I oh, no, not him. No, 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 keep still, come on. For God's sake, Curtis, are you just going to let him pick up the girl and walk out with her? But there's no way of stabbing him. Where's he taking her? But didn't either of you recognize him? Recognize him? Why should we? It's Ian Sanderson. Well, who's he? He's an MP, the opposition spokesman on defense matters. Oh, my God. But I just don't understand it. I think I do. What was a subject for scientific research has suddenly become a question of national security. Part 4. Official Intercessions. Would you mind just filling that in, please, sir? Certainly. You too, please, sir. What is it? A security pass, sir. Where do they keep in here, John? A crown jewel? This is the home office, not the Tower of London. Well, what do they keep here? I sometimes wonder. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, your appointment's with Colonel Gulliver, is it, sir? That's right. Yes, he'd be in room... Uh... Yes, here we are, room 517. 517? Yes, sir. Uh, follow that corridor down to the end and then take the lift to the fifth floor, sir. If you turn right when you get out, you'll find 517 almost facing you. Thank you very much. Come along, Curtis, my boy. I'm coming. You can't miss it, sir. The rooms are clearly numbered. John, you know, what I don't understand is if this Gulliver is a colonel, what's he doing in the home office, huh? Well, Harry Gulliver's ex-army, actually. Something to do with security now. Uh, Bit tight-lipped on the surface, but he's not a bad sort when you get to know him. Anyway, you sometimes have generals in the White House, don't you? Oh, yes, and we usually end up regretting. <laughs> What do they want, Gulliver? I've no idea, sir. Not yet. Oh, damn it, man. I would have thought you'd have enough in your play without inviting coach loads of civilians to come poking their noses in the security cabinet. Oh, I suppose you know what oh, you're doing. excuse me. What? Oh, good day to you, sir. Oh, good day to you, sir. Ah, there you are, Cornelius. Sorry good about morning, that. Colonel. May I introduce Professor Curtis Lark, Colonel Gulliver? Ah, pleased to meet you, Professor. Uh, hello, Colonel. Uh, who, who was that that just went out? Uh, Brigadier Sherman, my head of department. Like oh. the tank, you know? Bit yeah. of a blimp, really. <laughs> uh, take a pew, won't you? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, now, what's all this about? You tell it, John. Me? Yeah, you won't embroider it as much as I would. Oh, well, very well. <clears throat> it all started on the Isle of Lewig. Where the hell's that? Lewig? Oh, it's one of the Outer Hebrides. 
Professor Lark and I had gone up there to attend the funeral of a mutual friend. Now, let me get this straight, Cornelius. You're telling me that up on this Scottish island, um, uh, whatever it's called... The Isle of Lewig? Yes, yes, yes. There were these people, these um, uh, mutants, didn't you call them? That's right. Uh, who can be manipulated simply by having thoughts put into their heads by these um, um, controllers. Without the mutants being aware of it. That's the point, Colonel. They have no recollection of having been manipulated in this way. And it's all done by telepathy? Almost certainly. Well, it all sounds a bit like science fiction, I must say. Telepathy and mutants and all that. I mean, it sounds more like, um, more like, um... H.G. Wells? Hmm? Who? Oh. <laughs> Wasn't it Wells who wrote, In the country of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Mm -hmm. Very clever. Yeah. Yeah, well, you must admit, it, it sounds rather unbelievable. Anyway, I, I really can't see why you should come to me with this fairy tale. We found one of these controllers, as we call them, a girl about 19 years old, called Flora Keary. And we managed to get her to London for various tests. Now, they might prove something or other. Uh -huh. Well, that sounds more promising. Indeed. But somebody walked off with her last night. Walked off? Yes, stole, kidnapped. Abducted is the word, Curtis. Ah, oh, thank you. Uh, yes, someone abducted her, Colonel. And have you informed the police of this um, abduction? That won't be necessary. We know who the man is and why he did it. And why did he do it? Because she told him to. She just put the thought in his head. Ah. Y you mean this fellow was a... Was a one of these mutants? Is one of them, Colonel. He is also a member of Parliament. Is that meant to be some sort of joke, Cornelius? Oh, you haven't heard the payoff line yet. What does he mean, Cornelius? Why can't the damn fellow speak English? In my friend's vernacular, you ain't heard nothing yet. Come to the point, damn it. A mutant MP is one of the opposition spokesmen on defence matters. Oh, no! Now do you see why we came to you with this uh, fairy tale, Colonel? One way or another, I think we'd put that over rather well, John. You know, we'd make quite a good double act on the hall. Oh, saints preserve us. <laughs> Personally, I felt we were hamming like mad. <laughs> Don't we always? Speak for yourself. May I trouble with your passes, gentlemen? Yes, of course, yeah. Okay, here you go. Thank you, gentlemen. Good day to you. Good day. Fresh air at last. Yes, it was a bit stuffy in there. Mm. But I think old Gulliver got the message in the end. Yes, but will he do anything about it? I doubt it. He can't move openly against someone like Sanderson without definite proof. And we've no proof without Flora. No, that's the next step, isn't it? Yes, but what can we do? We can't just walk up and ask for her back. What? What did you just say? I said we can't just walk up to Sanderson and ask him to give Flora back to us. But that's exactly what we can do. In fact, it's the only way. It is. My dear Curtis, you really do have the most unerring nose for these things. Oh, I don't know. It's quite an ordinary nose, really. Chic, perhaps. Uh, patrician, even. Mm, soon after that. <laughs> yes? John Cornelius, I telephoned earlier. Oh, yes, Mr. Cornelius, and this must be... Professor Curtis Lark. Indeed. Uh, do come in. Mr. Sanderson is expecting you. Thank you. If you would care to wait here for a moment, I'll inform Mr. Sanderson of your arrival. Thank you. If you'd excuse me. A real old-world English butler. Isn't he just adorable? Down, Curtis, down. <laughs> this way, if you please. Uh, Mr. Cornelius, uh, Professor Lark, sir. Ah, uh, thank you, Gwent. Uh, do come in, won't you? This is Professor Lark, sir, and I am do? Cornelius. How do you do? Hello. Uh, sit yourselves down, won't you? Thank, thank you, you so much. Oh, I know you both by name, of course, and in your case, Mr. Cornelius, by reputation. But uh, I can't pretend to understand the uh, the reason for this visit. I'll come straight to the point, Mr. Sanderson. We've just returned from the Isle of Luig. Luig? Oh, good heavens, I was born there. So we understand. Oh, it's such a beautiful place. Marvellous place to grow up in. It has many, many happy associations for me. Oh, you were saying about Luig? When we came back, we brought with us a young lady who showed all the classic symptoms of what could prove to be a brain tumour. We wanted to run a series of medical checks on her. She's been living in John's apartment just across the road until uh, yesterday evening. 
when she disappeared. Yes. Her name is Flora Carey. Yes, I know. Oh, strange, isn't it? So many years later, not knowing what she was or where she was or what she looked like. And then suddenly waking, as from a dream, and finding she had come from nowhere to hold your hand and ask to be taken home for tea. And you suddenly realised that all her life... She will just stay a child and never do anything but hold your hand and ask to be taken home for tea. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't quite follow. Oh, you've brought me hope, Mr. Cornelius. A small hope, but something that I can hang on to, that I, I can at least begin to understand. And for that, I thank you. Both for myself and my daughter. Your what? Flora Keary is my daughter, Professor. My natural daughter. Holy mackerel. Never profane the mackerel, my dear Curtis. It is the most underrated fish. Well smoked and washed down with a little muscadet, it is to the more discerning palate eminently preferable to the more esteemed and popular trout. John. Mm hmm. It was I who suggested the mackerel. Did you? And the muscadet. Oh, really? Mm. Then I commend you, my dear Curtis. Your palate is obviously improving. <laughs> Could we get back to cases, do you think? Oh, by all means. You obviously doubt Sanderson's claim to be Flora's father. Yes, frankly, I do, John. I, I honestly do. It's all too pat, too glib. Well, he seems to believe it. And I think that was genuine. Yes, but who's to say that she didn't put the idea into his head? Mm -hmm. She desperately needs affection, security, someone to lean on. She only had to think of him as her father, and he would have accepted it as fact. Agreed, but at least the dates matched. And I really don't think she could have put all that background detail into his head. Well, you could be right. I can't see how she could have known all that stuff either. No. I'm sure all she knew was that her mother was murdered for... What did she call it? Begetting her in sin. Yes, yes. It all comes back to the Reverend... Donald Schooler, doesn't it? That man's got an awful lot to answer for. And since the Reverend Schooler is the only person able to verify Sanderson's story, we have no option but to accept it at face value, at least for the moment. Well, does that mean we have to leave Flora in Sanderson's care? I really don't see what else we can do. She'll be well looked after, and we have complete access to her. Besides... Besides what? Well, what will we do with Laura when we've finished all our tests and checks? Send her back to Louis? Into the Reverend Schoolhouse's tender clutches over my dead body. Quite right. Sanderson's claim to be her father could suit us very well. Very well indeed. Could it, John? Or could it be risking Flora's life? Curtis, melodrama does not become you. It sits badly on your accent. <laughs> But look now, honestly, seriously, there, there must be a controller behind Sanderson. It doesn't necessarily follow just because Sanderson is a mutant. No, but it's possible and you know it. I mean, otherwise, you would never have suggested going to someone like Gulliver. All right, Curtis. Point taken. Good. Then no fully-fledged controller is going to take kindly to a, a butterfly mind like Flora's fouling up the works. No. No, I would think that might well be true. On the other hand, one could argue that if there is another controller, Flora's butterfly mind might be just the thing to flush him out into the open. You make it sound more like a sprat to catch a mackerel. How appropriate, Curtis. <laughs> more wine, if I... No, thank you. Well, John, once we get back to the flat, what's our next step going to be, hmm? To amuse Flora. Poor Sanderson seems most anxious for us to maintain our professional interest in the girl. Yeah. And we certainly want to keep her under observation. Absolutely. Well, so it might be a nice gesture if you were to invite Flora to do a little sightseeing. Me? Why me? Oh, why not? It's much more likely that you would want to see the sights than I would, after all. <laughs> you are a foreigner. Xenophobia ill becomes you, John. Though it does sit well enough on that accent. <laughs> I thought the changing of the guard might be appropriate. Buckingham Palace? No, Horse Guards Parade. Uh. Then I thought we might 
perhaps pop in for morning coffee with Colonel Gulliver. His office is quite close by. And here I was thinking Machiavelli was dead. The horse is lovely. Ah, they're beautiful. Yes. But why aren't all the soldiers wearing red? Because they're from two different regiments. The ones in red are the lifeguards, uh-huh. and the ones in blue are the royal horse guards. Or is it the other way round, Curtis? Well, why ask me? They're your, <laughs> your soldiers, John. Oh, no. What's the matter, Flora? Someone's looking for me. Oh, come on, Flora, relax. Look at the soldiers. They're so pretty. I think striking would be more apt. I want to go home. But we've only just arrived. Someone's looking for me. Oh, nonsense, Flora. I'm frightened. I want to go home. Oh, no, come along, Flora. Don't be so silly. You're imagining things. That doesn't reassure me one whit. Please. John, why don't you take Flora? Go see our friend Gulliver, huh? And what do you propose doing? Well, I'll hang around here and make sure that no one is following her. Following? Oh, come on, Curtis. Oh, please, I must go home. You know, John, as well as I do, that Flora has an unfortunate habit of being right about these things. Anyway, it might even be the first of your mackerel. Please. Do as I suggest. Please, John. Take Flora to see Gulliver. If anyone is following her, there's no way he can cross a street as wide as Whitehall without showing himself. And if he does? Well, then I'll follow him, of course. Oh, oh, very well. Come along then, Flora. Oh, thank you. There's no one following us yet. He's still looking for me. Well, I wish he'd show himself if he's going to. Oh, so do I. I wish he'd show himself. I wish he'd show himself. Oh, I'm frightened. There, there, Flora. There's nothing to be frightened of. You're quite safe enough with me, I promise you. Oh, there he is. Oh! Oh! Oh. Poor devil. Slight concussion, contusions on the face and arms. Nothing serious, Colonel. Where is he now? In the hospital, presumably. They took him off in an ambulance. And you think he was following you? Following Flora, Colonel. I'm sure of it. He was looking for me. He was the one. Well, he wasn't one of my men. His name was McBinney. How do you know that? Well, we checked his identity before they put him in the ambulance. Well, I don't have anyone of that name on my staff. The police on the Isle of Lewig have a sergeant by that name. This wasn't the same man, though. No, but... There's uh... lots of McBinney's on Lewig. Miss Carey, is there any reason, any reason at all, why anyone from Lewig should be looking for you? To take me back. Flora, listen to me. Did you want that man, McBinney, did you want him to cross the road? <laughs> him to show himself. I didn't mean to hurt him. I wanted him to show himself. It's all right, Flora. <laughs> really, it is. There, dear. You said you wanted him to show himself. Well, so I concentrated and willed him to. I didn't know he'd get hurt. Stop this silly charade. I don't believe a word of it. It's all some damn fool prank. I'm surprised at you, Cornelius, a man of your position. And you, young lady, I don't know what you hope to gain from all this nonsense. I want to go home. No, I'm sure you do, but you're not going. Take me home. You're not going anywhere till we've got to the bottom of this tissue of ludicrous lies. Take me home. Sit down. Steady on, Colonel. There's no need to adopt that tone. I shall adopt whatever damn tone I please. Take me home. And you will stop that sniveling. Oh, come on now, Flora. Be a good girl and keep quiet. Take me home. I want to go away from here. Yes, I know, Flora. Just leave it to old Uncle Corny, eh? He's going to talk our way out of this, aren't you? Am I? Well, you've certainly got some explaining to do. Take oh. me home. Need to be a Sherman. Take What can I do for you, sir? Oh. But, sir, I'm... Forget it, Colonel. Me. There's nothing you can do oh. but watch. We can go home. We can go home. Please. We can go home. We can... Go home. We can go home. Where's he taking her? Home, by the sound of it. We'd better go after them. You go, John. You might be able to sweet talk her into switching off. And you? I'd better stay here. I've got some explaining to do. Do your best. Okay. 
Would you mind filling me in? What what exactly is going on around here? Well, to put it simply, Flora's been sending out telepathic distress signals. And your gallant brigadier answered them. You mean... I do. And it couldn't happen to a nicer man. But the, the brigadier's the head of the department. Well, in that case, Colonel, the department's got quite a headache. You should have seen poor Gulliver's face, John. It was a picture, an absolute picture. And so was Sherman's. He was halfway down the corridor when I caught up with him, and he couldn't understand what he was doing there. He was terribly concerned about himself. Anyway, it's an ill wind. Is this our street? Yes, your father's house is just down there on the left. Oh, where the ambulance is. Ambulance? She's right. There is an ambulance. And the police. Now stop here, driver. Very good, sir. Now, Flora, you stay with Uncle Cornelius, and I'll just go and see what's going on, huh? All right, all right, stand back there, please. Come on, move along if you would. There's nothing more to see. What happened, officer? Well, that's what we're trying to find out, sir. But why the ambulance? Because someone went and got themselves shot, didn't they? Now, come along now, it's all over. But who, officer? Who's been shot? Well, they're bringing him out now, sir. Let us know if he's a friend of yours, won't you? Now, come along now. Stand back, if you please. Let the man breathe a little. Oh, my God. It's... it's Gwent. Gwent? Who's he? Saunderson's butler. What? Well, oh, now you understand yes. why I was hustling you and Flora away from yes, there. Yes. Well, I couldn't say much in front of her. No, no, of course you couldn't. It could have set the whole clockwork orange ticking all over again. My word, yes. It's a rum business, this. <laughs> you can say that again. Well, <laughs> cheers. Cheers. <sighs> Where's Flora now? Staring out of her bedroom window, waiting for her father, for Sanderson, to come back. Well, it shouldn't be long now. Apparently, he went down to the police station to make a formal statement. Those things can drag on for hours. Wonder if Gulliver's heard the news. But does the left hand ever knoweth what the right hand doeth? No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's the British definition of security. <laughs> I'd better go and phone him. You do just that. <laughs> Well, hello, Flora. Hello, Uncle Cornelius. Go on in. I'll be with you in a second. Just have to make a phone call. Hello, Flora. Hello, Professor. Your daddy not back yet, huh? Well, he came back just now. Oh, good. That'll make you happy. Well, yes, he, he came in a big car. There were two other men with him. Oh? Yes, there were two. Well, they were just policemen, probably. Policemen? Only to look after him. Your daddy's a very important man, you know. Oh, oh yes. Anyway, let's go tell Mr. Cornelius the good news, huh? <laughs> and then we'll take you home. I'd be most grateful I'll if you would you. tell him that. Bye. Well? He wasn't there. Well, Saunderson's just got back. Oh, there. Well, I thought I'd just walk her across. Huh? Right, huh? John Cornelius? Uh, Ian Sanderson speaking. Is Flora with you? Oh, yes, she is. Now, hold on, Curtis. She was um, just about to leave. Uh, well, I, I'd rather she didn't. Um, not just at the moment. The place is in a bit of a shambles. Yes, I imagine it would be. I don't want her to see it like this. It, it might upset her. I can understand that. Don't concern yourself about her. Perhaps you'll let us know when you'd like her to come back. Uh, yes, yes, I will. Uh, uh, thank you. Not at all. Uh, uh, by the way. Yes? There are two men on their way over to you now. Policemen. Oh? They want to talk to Flora about the business here this afternoon. Someone broke into my flat, you know, damn near killed my butler. Y yes, so I heard, but Flora knows nothing about it. She was she was with us all the afternoon. Y yes, I told them that, but they insist. They seem to think Flora was the intended victim, not Gwent. Cornelius. They could very well be right, Mr. Sanderson. They could very well be right. I'll ring you later. Goodbye. Goodbye. That's odd. What is it, John? Sanderson said there's a couple of policemen on their way over to talk to Flora. So? It must be them already. Well, I suppose I'd better let them in. No. What? No, don't let them in. But they're only policemen, Flora. Don't be silly. No, don't let them in. Don't let them in. Oh, keep them out. Keep them out. Well, she's putting the chain on the door, Flora. They're going to kill me. They're going to kill me. 
Darn, she means it. Quick, phone Gulliver. Uh, I guess he's not there. Well, we mustn't let those men in. They're going to kill me. They're going to kill now, me. Calm down, Flora. Calm down and concentrate. They're going to kill me. <laughs> Now, listen. Listen to me, Flora. They, they can't kill you if you want them to go away. Now, will them to go away. I can't. Make them go away, Flora. I can't. Oh, come on. You can do it if you want to. I can't. I can't. I won't go. Flora, try, try. I am trying. Oh, come on, Flora. It's not working. Come on. It's not working. They're going to kill me. Get down, Flora. Get down. Keep down, Flora. Don't move. Flora. Flora, are, are you all right? Flora, what? Flora's dead. I can't believe it. Such a waste. Yes, John. But now you have to believe that there, there is another controller right here in London. That was part four of Aliens in the Mind, co-starring Vincent Price as Curtis Lark and Peter Cushing as John Cornelius with Sandra Clark as Flora Keary, Fraser Carr, Ian Sanderson, William Edel, Gulliver, Clifford Norgate, Brigadier Sherman, and Michael Harbour as Gwent. Aliens in the Mind was written by René Basilico from an idea by Robert Holmes. Production by John Dias. And Aliens in the Mind continues at the same time next weekend with bad news for Flora because she meets a...